What can I do? I mean, how do you even know that it's COVID, though? He's gonna be fine, Faye. The, the whole thing is just so surreal. Family comes first. I will be there, and I will make sure that we are all there. Today we're looking at We Are Gathered Here Today from summer 2022, so super recent. Uh, I'm Kim, which is good, always good to introduce yourself. And uh, yeah, I'm here to witter to you about movies in general, but today this one, obviously. It's um, it's a fun one. It's uh, It seems like it should be a documentary, but it is in fact a fictional film, but it's about um, the Zoom calls during the COVID lockdown phase where nobody could get to go and say goodbye to anyone, which I know, no, it's okay, I know where you're coming in. Everybody wants to watch this. It's a proper popcorn movie. Everybody is racing to watch it. It's a really happy, delightful film. And yeah, okay, I cried my face off a whole big bunch. A whole big bunch. Oh, the Kleenex stocks. I should have invested. Never mind, not the point. The point is, yeah, it's a really sad film. It's a really hard film. And I am going to recommend it anyway, because it's a really good film. I say that good in the sense of what it's saying, what it's doing, how it's done, and its value, for want of a better expression. It is a valuable film. It's telling a not very often told story, because when have we ever been in a situation like this before? I'm not going to go into the whole thing. We all know how... Hmm, let's not swear. We all know how uh, pretty damn... Yeah, I'm going to just say shitty. It's been shitty. It has. Anyway. It's written and directed by Paul Boyd, who is so stupidly famous in the music video industry that I have already forgotten the list of people that I was going to reel off because there are so many, so many. Uh, Sting, Shania Twain, Simply Red, uh, Kylie Minogue. No, I've forgotten everybody else because it was just scrolling and scrolling and scrolling down IMDb going, what the hell hasn't he done and for who? Because this guy is super famous. So amazing, amazing music video history. And obviously a hell of an eye for concentrating on a story that is told almost entirely through the camera, directly down the camera, which is obviously valuable and possibly in one place, slightly not. But I'm going to come back to that later. It's starring and produced by Danny Houston, Huston. I don't actually know how you say that, so sorry if anybody wants to correct me on it, because I've never said it out loud before. Feel free in the comments if need be. Um, who we all know from, uh, God, so many things, Succession. Yellowstone, Wonder Woman, uh, he's been about, frankly. He's been a busy boy and uh, he is busy again here. He does a lot of the heavy lifting. He basically carries the emotional weight of the entire family on his shoulders. He's the uniting character between what is actually a very varied, widespread, modern family. Obviously not, not to go borrowing from, from other stuff, but it's a, it's an expression for a reason. That's It's just uh, it's a lot, basically, is what it is. But that's what makes it, you know, realistic and important. Um, his mum, Jenny O'Hara, who of uh, devil fame, you, you may recognise, but lots of other stuff as well. I mean, she's in the recent Perry Mason reboot. And yes, I was a huge Perry Mason fan as a kid, watched it with my grandparents all the time. So, yeah, quite excited just to see people here and there anywhere. Um, she's playing this sort of um, uh, matriarch character who for a little while is... Um, a little too good to be true. She was very good. I mean, she was this fantastic, like, I speak and thou shalt obey me. And she felt, yeah, not really like a real person until she turned around and bit several of the other characters' heads off. And I was like, there we go. That's that's real life. That's that's more of the family I've been a part of, which sounds terrible. Oh, God, I can somehow hear all my family turning around to come and bitch slap me for naysaying the matriarchs of my family. No bitch slap me. And uh, yeah, and, and no, 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 no disrespect, men. Everybody has that amazing character in their family who rules with with a velvet glove, but definitely the iron fist in between, if you know what I mean. And uh, yeah, she, um, she and Lin Shay of the Farrelly brothers fame, and obviously God knows lo loads of other stuff. But I'm always, she's always going to be a uh, oh my God, kingpin and uh, the something about Mary in my head to me. And uh, if you know what I'm talking about, you've all got the mental visuals right now, so you're welcome. And uh, yeah, she's uh, she's her sister-in-law because obviously the the real main character is the man who is unfortunately dying in hospital of COVID, and everybody is uniting via Zoom to to say goodbye in the only way they can. Yes, it got very dark all of a sudden. Hello, this is England. Hi, lots of rain coming. But uh, yeah, so uh, Lynche is the 
the grieving sister and Jenny O'Hara, the grieving mother and Danny Houston. I mean, they're the, the Stone family and uh, he's trying to bring everyone together, unite everybody in time for the Zoom call, dealing with the doctors and stuff like that. Just really trying to uh, corral everybody into this baffling situation that no one has ever had to face before. People have lost people at long distance or not been able to be there in time to be with somebody. But we've never been in situations before where it was like, yeah, absolutely, you can get to them. You can see them, but you can't. We can't for your safety, for their safety, for our safety, we can't. It's a really terrible thing. He's going and there's nothing you can do about it. But you can watch on a video if you'd like. Yeah, it's a, it's a new story to be told. And I do feel like it's been done really quite well. It's got the occasional issue. I'll get to that as well. But the cast it drew in and everything else going is, I mean, I think everybody knew this was important. I mean, just the people knocking about. I mean, you know, Ray Dawn Chonning is in this. I haven't seen that. I'm like, like, commander. Oh my God, colour purple. Just like, like, the, there's people everywhere. If you look at the cast list, you're going to be wowed, trust me. It's, it's just, um, it's startlingly good for what it was. I was expecting to be depressed. Yes. <laughs> Saddened. Yes. Horrified. Yes. I could keep going and I won't. But you know what I mean? It's a hard watch. I would still recommend it to everybody, even if you only watch it once. God knows I won't be watching it twice, but I'm glad I watched it for once. Um, yeah, it's sad. It's hard. And I don't consider this spoiler territory, but it is a little bit of a trigger warning. So apologies if this is the wrong way to go about it. But if you are somebody who has lost someone to COVID in the last couple of years, um, approach this one with caution. I mean, you may not feel you need to watch it if you've been through it, but um, it's very realistically portrayed. And some of the sounds, breathing or lack thereof, are really quite on the nose and um i say this is somebody with some experience of hospitals and the nastiness that entails there as well as all the amazing amazing fantastic healthcare professionals and just just uh, fantastic people who all they want to do is help but yeah if you have horror stories from hospital and you don't want to revisit them maybe give this one a little bit more time before you have a revisit of that experience because those noises are hard to hear and I got to tip my cap for their inclusion in the first place because my <laughs> my family have noticed from the differences between films and reality that a lot of the nasty stuff in hospitals can frequently be glossed over unless it's sort of um, impressively gory. But no, this is more realistically sad and harrowing. So yeah, step careful there. I will cease lecturing now. Um, I just. There's so much good stuff to talk about, really. Um, there's this constant feeling of bewilderment and helplessness, so much helplessness. There's a different moment of the sort of anger and bargaining grief stages for everyone before hitting acceptance. Is that He can't be dying. What do you mean he's dying? He's not dying. Of course he's not dying. Well, then I'm going to go and see him. Well, then I want to go and see him in person. What do you mean we've got to do it on Zoom? It's this whole shifting phase for everyone. Sometimes they get straight to it and double back later for the fury that this is how they've got to say goodbye to a loved one. But it's it's still, my God, I'm, I'm still reeling. I mean, it's been a week since I've watched this film and I, I'm still reeling about how helpless I felt watching it. It had this, um, it starts out with an enormous documentary feel to it because it is incredibly realistic. But as more time went by, I felt like if I was stuck in a waiting room somewhere and I couldn't go anywhere, listening in on this family's awful, terrible last goodbye to an incredibly loved patriarch. Um, and yeah, it's just, like I said, it's the helplessness, but I couldn't leave, as it were. Could have turned off any time I liked, obviously. But in the sense of feeling almost shackled to their emotions, it was really deftly played because they get up, they move around, they walk around, they talk to each other, they're wrangling with who's going to call who, who's going to get this person. What do you mean I can't talk to that person? It's just, it's beautifully played because it doesn't get stagnant and it doesn't get, um, I say too heavy. Clearly it gets too heavy. It's going to be extremely sad in places. Like I said, I cried a big old bunch, but, um, 
there's fantastic moments where these people who've obviously been spread out during COVID and unable to see each other are all in the chat room talking to each other and it's so nice and everybody can talk to them you know it's just and then they can suddenly realize that the other picture in the chat is of this um unconscious wheezing struggling dying beloved man of theirs and it's this um whiplash sensation and you go through it with them it's oh it's beautifully done it really is i mean i'm trying to not gush too much i feel like i'm doing a, a stupid amount of raving here for i mean I'm, I'm a happy ending merchant i am not somebody who watches sad films i mean if i want to cry i will go to marvel and disney and stuff like that and have a big sob at the big emotional moments but if something is hard, I generally end up you know, veering away because we have the news and reality for that. That's always fun. As somebody who is a huge fan of happy endings and uh, prefer to deal with my sadness and reality, where it unfortunately is almost unshakable in these last few years, I think we'll all agree. There's these lovely moments where they catch up and they, I mean, there's... Um, uh, in-laws of people who have been divorced and they're still bonding over all the years they've had together and it's just really nice and healthy this scattered wide family almost it's this amazing clash of of celebrating someone um the shock of realizing you're about to lose them and just straight up grief and there is actually a, a moment with a slightly cringy if beautifully well meant and actually really quite lovely in its own way um song to you know commemorate this poor poor dying man and um there's this um sort of clash between characters where some people think it's totally not appropriate and other people are like no you you have to celebrate the the good along with the bad you have to it's it's the as i was saying it's the the feeling of of funerals and wake at the same time and 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 the moment of death all at the same time this massive collision of of feelings and celebrating and mourning and raging and just a lot all at once and i uh, just hats off hats off to the director hats off to the the actors because i really felt all of that and i think they did an amazing job with it my uh only um criticisms she said casually like like uh, they're not actually criticisms is the 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 secondary storyline as it were the the scattered and occasionally troubled nature of the modern blended families and divorced families and just it's it's a little like padding every now and then but in the same way that i said before that i'm i'm grateful for there not just being this static sensation of just being in the zoom room just being in the grief just being in the moment where these people have realized they're about to lose somebody and there's nothing they can do about it it's really good that they have these moments of life messy and and uncontrollable and it's just there's i mean it covers a lot it does cover a lot i mean it covers the black lives matter movement interfaith family problems i've literally made myself a list here so do excuse me if i look down for a moment but it covers, like I said, Black Lives Matter, interfaith family problems, LGBTQ intolerance, divorced families remarrying new partners. There's even a little bit of autistic representation. Um, it felt a little tropey there. I mean, they're trying to check a lot of boxes and I appreciate that because they're trying to do it in the right way for representation, inclusivity and stuff like that. But every now and then, it's a little heavy handed and life is that lot going on. And one of the recurring themes of this is that there is a lot going on. We don't have the time to stop and go, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. One of my loved ones is dying. I need to pause reality for a minute so that I can process this and everyone needs to just chill the hell out for a minute because I've got some stuff to go through. No, oh my God, that'd be nice, but no, so much no, vastly no. As we all know, Life is messy. And I feel like I keep coming back to the word messy, but oh my God, messy. The film, messy, life, messy. Everything is just a mess. You've got really lovely people falling out over the stupidest things in reality and in the film. And for every now and then I did go, ah, leaning a little hard into it. Bang on the money also. It's a weird thing. I'm criticizing it. And yet I want to take back my criticism at the same time, which is a bloody good balance to walk actually. Sometimes you want the breathing space because 
there's a lot going on and you want to sit with the characters in their feelings and other times it's too much and we can't afford to go down that road with them because it is too hard, too sad, too all-encompassing and it just would completely override what's going on which I mean as much as it absolutely is about Covid, totally is about Covid from from um, Covid deniers, non-mask wearers, safety issues, uh, lockdown stuff, I mean there's, there's a list of things they managed to squeeze in without it being too shoehorned in but it is about Covid and it's not about Covid, it's about family and everything that comes with that, all the good stuff and all the bad stuff, which, I mean, that couldn't be truer to reality, that you don't get the moment to breathe. But like I said, that life is messy and beyond their control. And so there is a couple of them. Um, this is probably my only criticism. How I take it back, it's still not a full criticism, is that there's a couple of um, ambiguous, not quite cliffhangery things at the end. Uh, just in the sense of, oh, what happens next? What's going to happen with these guys? What's happening with that character? We'll never know. It's not a sequelable type situation. It's just life. So my criticism is that possibly I would have liked that to be slightly less realistic so that we could have had a little bit more of an ending there. So yeah, I'm complaining basically that... <laughs> It's a little too realistic uh, with the the not being able to tie up at the loose ends in the way that I would have liked. But I've also got to say kudos to it because um, that is true to reality. This could happen to anyone. This terrible day could happen to you. And at the end of the day, not everything will be resolved. Everything will still be up in the air and you will have this massive gaping sadness inside you. And you'll just have to keep dealing with everything else that follows it because, hey, life is fun and fair, right, guys? I have a little bit of a tonal disconnect when the end credits roll as a music video. It's a lovely song. It's beautifully sung. It's beautifully shot. It's just after the emotional rawness of the film, it sort of knocked me back a bit. It threw me out of the moment. Uh, it's really good. It's really sad. Get Kleenex, get chocolate, get ice cream, get popcorn, and then you won't eat them because you'll be too busy sobbing, but at least you'll have them, and that's the important point. But yeah, we are gathered here today. Definitely something everybody who has lived through this time should watch at least once. It's a good film. Go see it.